Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why support and resistance zones are supply and demand zones. Now, many of you watching this video would have been under the impression due to uh, YouTube um, popular videos and Instagram and Facebook that actually support and resistance is different from supply and demand. And the only difference is really um, the way that you actually um, trade the zones. But uh, the support and resistance zones are actually past supply and demand zones. And I'm really going to get into it um, in this next uh, uh, maybe five, ten minutes. We have an example as well. I use probably gold, um, recent gold uh, analysis um, to uh, really kind of highlight the point. So, uh, first of all, what we have to do is really understand, um, you know, supply and demand versus um, support and resistance. And again, like I said, it's just, it's just a difference in really how they approach. So what we have to do is, first of all, when we're looking at um, supply and demand is we're understanding uh, value. Right, so typically this is how traders will draw, or this is how I draw anyway, um, and understand supply and demand. Yeah, so supply and demand is higher highs and higher lows, where this area here is going to be an area of uh, demand. Because if we take this this first leg from this low, yeah, to this high, this is where demand started, yeah, and this is where supply comes in because prices cannot go past you know, a certain price point. So let's say, for example, that's price and that's time when we're on a price chart, yeah? Whatever price this is, yeah? And let's say, for example, it was five, yeah? At this point in time, this was seen as an expensive area, therefore prices couldn't make its way higher. So then traders probably started selling, taking profit. There was more supply here than demand, than buy orders, yeah? So this is where all the buy orders were, more demand, more buy orders, prices go higher until the imbalance in supply and demand where there's more supply here, right? Traders not seeing this as an area where this is an absolute bargain area. They're seeing that as an, as an expensive area, right? This is expensive, yeah? And then profit taking, etc., goes on, yeah? Now, when prices start to fall, obviously there's more supply orders than demand orders. But when you get um, another leg higher, so many traders recognize this as higher highs and higher lows. So buying starts here again. Yeah, so more demand starts here, buying. And as prices make their way higher, yeah, when it goes past a previous expensive area, yeah, previous expensive area, what was considered expensive here, because we know that for a fact, because prices couldn't push higher, Buyers weren't willing to buy at this, you know, this 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 price point, whatever this price point is. But if later on prices do do something like that, yeah, they go higher, then this is then seen as this as, as a potential strong area of demand because this is where the origin of the move was, in the same way that this was the origin of the move that made the move higher. Yeah. So when we're looking at trading supply and demand, it's always higher highs, higher lows, yeah? This drop base rally, rally base drop thing is, is you know, is something different. When we're looking at price charts, it's always about higher highs and higher lows. This is what we need to determine. This is what makes sense, yeah? Um, so as new highs are made, yeah? The swing, the higher low, this whole area here becomes the strongest area of demand, right? Now, with support and resistance, how traders will trade support and resistance is pretty much a similar thing where you get higher highs and higher lows. And what traders will look at is a previous area, yeah, of what is known as resistance, yeah, and then looking for the uh, for a pattern here, right? So this was a previous expensive area here. And so traders are now looking at trading the, um, uh, the, the, the under, well, they were trading the underside of that and now looking to trade the, uh, the other side of that because this is what resistance, as we're taught, should turn to what support. 
price is going to be support if obviously prices are actually supported but in anticipation of that that's where traders are looking to trade but if you actually now look at similarities between support and resistance and supply and demand it's just a case of we as supply and demand traders are trading down here yeah at that area right there so if we're looking at this being the bargain area or the cheapest area, and we know that to be true because buyers were buying and buying and buying so much so that even at a previous expensive area, prices went to the upside. Yeah. So this has to be the most recent bargain. When traders, when traders are looking at buying here, they're actually not buying in the best place, are they? support doesn't always represent the best place to buy now it's the best place if it's part of your you know support and resistance strategy yeah but from a demand zone perspective and what we know to be true about you know what price is doing and showing us this cannot be the best area to buy if we're taking this higher low yeah and higher high and the higher high principle this is going to be this level of demand is going to be the best area yeah and when we think about what supply uh sorry support and resistance levels are they are actually just failed supply and demand zones so again going back to this area here if all we saw was this high and a pullback this is a supply zone or a supply level and then when prices come back to it yeah, so it didn't work here, but when prices come back to it, this was a failed supply zone that turns into a support area or what traders would term support. So it was failed supply, failed supply. And that is all support and resistance levels are. Yeah, is that they are past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future right that have failed to work and then traders are just trading the other side of that area yeah but also remember the most important bit is that while traders who trade tend to trade support and resistance areas yeah are getting in here the most important thing is that if we're taking this as an expensive area, higher highs, because prices couldn't push higher than whatever this price was here, but the origin of the move up, yeah, the higher low is a proven bargain area, then support and resistance isn't always the best area when we're choosing bargains because everyone knows the mantra, the cliche, buy low, sell high is this low sometimes a lot of times when if you guys know about fibonacci you're pulling a fibonacci from a low to a high you're choosing a leg aren't you choosing a swing right and all fibonacci is is just looking at the discount so sometimes you get a 38.2 yeah percent discount some traders will look at the 50 percent yeah this might be 50 percent discount from the high to the low that's why traders trade pullbacks and that's not to say that support and resistance doesn't work of course it does it can work and it does work on a price chart but if you're looking at buying at the best areas you want to look for the bargain basement even the 61.8 percent yeah fibonacci is a nice discount it's a very nice discount but it's not the best if this was a bargain here yeah and prices make their way down to a demand zone then that's going to be the best area to look for a buy trade if we know fundamentally because prices are driven by really three things fundamentals risk sentiment yeah so risk sentiment risk on and risk off and liquidity right outside of that i don't think there's really anything that markets are driven by Fundamental analysis, which determines value, risk sentiment, safe haven plays, and uh, risk tolerance, and 
the amount of liquidity that there is for prices to move higher or lower yeah so what can we do right what can we do um, to potentially trade both at the uh, same time so combining support and resistance with supply and demand zones that's really what we're looking to do so let me draw that out for you right so what you want to see is you want to see something like this yeah Remember, higher highs and higher lows are areas where, you know, of the best demand zone. So if we're, if we're in the demand zone, that would be where it is, yeah? So higher highs, higher lows, and then you're waiting for a new high. Now, again, once a new high is made, that's your level of demand, or the best area to look for buy trades. And then what you wanna do is, when prices come back down to this area, is combine that with previous support and resistance. So remember, this was a failed. This is a this was a supply zone, yeah. Which traders would call, you know, resistance. It failed here. Traders would normally get in here. Not supply and demand traders. We're looking for proof, right? Proof of value first we need the market to prove that there is strong demand here that's what we want I mean we, we can only do that if prices start to make new highs or what would be considered an expensive area so we need the market to prove that that is a strong area of demand and then when price comes back to this area here then not only do we look to potentially buy if our fundamental and uh, risk sentiment analysis says so, but then we can also look to combine what other areas of uh, support and resistance or failed supply zones in this case, yeah, because we know other traders are looking at trading this area, right? Because any trader that's looking at resistance, potential support, is going to be looking here as well so we have not only understanding the bigger picture and understanding that we want to be buyers here yeah so buy orders of demand we're also going to have other traders who trade support and resistance looking at doing what buying as well yeah so there's going to be new traders entering into here who are looking to the left and understanding that this is a level of what they term to be support and resistance when pretty much support and resistance is supply and demand yeah so that's our order equation confluence because you've got to think to yourself from a technical analysis perspective why would there be more supply here than demand because if there was more supply there then prices would put you know would, would drop yeah none of us truly ever know because the market is a probabilities game right but from a technical analysis perspective and if you know we're looking to buy anywhere this makes sense understanding how market participants enter the market technically this area here yeah which would be again resistance is not the best area to look for a trade doesn't matter if prices go higher good for them yeah good for those traders what we need to do is have proven proof of value yeah if we're, if i'm going to the shop i don't want to if i want to get a discount i'm not looking to get a 20 or 30 percent discount half price is nice but i want the absolute bargain and you should too yeah so let's um look at this on a price chart let's go to gold and look at this on the on a gold price chart so on this price chart of gold um we've got what traders would typically term as uh, support and resistance, right? So you've got a level of resistance there, got a level has been rejected first of all, yeah? And then it's got a level here. And then you've got another bit of rejection there, and then a failed resistance becomes what? Potential support, yeah? 
But now I want you to look at this in, I guess, the, the terms of supply and demand. So let's get rid of this area here. So what we've got is we've got, let me uh, bring up this, we've got lower highs and lower lows being made. Low, lower high, lower low. So this area becomes an area of supply. Yeah, this area becomes an area of supply. And let's just uh, get rid of that for now. Yep, yeah, that whole area now is an area of supply. And let me just uh, turn this to the supply zone so you can see. Yeah, lower highs, lower lows. When prices come back up here, that is supply. The supply zone ended up holding. Brilliant. Now, as we go forward, we drag this across. Yeah, and in fact, we can move the supply zone up here like that. As we go across into this zone here, we can see that that level of supply, because this would have been an expensive area, correct? This is what we know to be an expensive area. Why? Because prices couldn't go higher than this. Buyers didn't want to push prices higher. This wasn't seen as an absolute bargain. So we've got more selling, sell orders, more supply orders, which drove the market down. Something's obviously changed. So buyers ended up buying in here, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, right there. Yeah, at each higher high that pushes prices higher, we have to say that that's a potential bargain, that is a potential bargain, that is a potential bargain. Yeah, but let's look at this in the context of demand. So as we go through, and let's uh, just get rid of all this. Right, so traders, and now looking at this area, as we pointed out before, as an area of what? Support and resistance, correct? Got resistance, resistance, and there should be where traders would be getting involved, somewhere around here. And it does, right? Now, we don't necessarily have the strongest area of demand. There is definitely demand here because there was buyers here and prices were moving higher. Yeah, so there is some demand here. Is it a strong area of demand? No, not yet. We want to see proof of value. Prices really need to go above this area here, this area here, before really saying that anything around here is a decent area of demand. Yeah, so not yet, not yet, not yet. Then we start to get prices move to the upside. So now we can start to see that this whole area here now starts to become a nice area of potential strong demand because buyers come into the market and they're pushing prices above what is considered a past expensive area. Yeah. So now if prices come back down, or if they do come back down, you can start to see where buyers are getting into the market there. Yeah, they're starting to get in now here. So as prices come down into this area, higher highs, higher lows. This was the higher high here in this area. So that was the higher high. And these areas now start to look like what? higher lows. So then when prices come back down into these areas, this is where you want to look potentially to get long because it was a proven bargain here back in April, which led to a new high. So now it's about trying to get involved in where we are currently today, yeah? With the combination of what? 
resistance, resistance, turn to what? Support, support. So this was a past supply zone, past supply zone that had been, let me take this area here, sorry. Yeah, that had been projected into the future and is acting as what now? Support. So whenever you uh, see anyone else talk about supply and the difference between supply and demand and support and resistance, this is the definitive video. You will probably won't find anything else like this on YouTube. Uh, my ideas are my own, original, um, and if anyone has, um, you know, uh, the same idea, then great for them. But uh, this is original thought, and this is what makes sense to me logically, and is what's, what has made sense to me for a number of years. Yeah, so there is no difference. The search is over. You don't need to, uh, um, you know, worry about it anymore as far as the difference. You can trade both. A lot of traders tend to say one or the other is 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 better. It, one isn't necessarily better than the other because they're both the same. It's just the approach and how you look at the market. Yeah, and why there's likely to be more demand here. Yeah, so why is there likely to be more demand in this area? Because trade, first of all, we know that it's a bargain area because we made a new high. Yeah, made a new high. So potential bargain. We as supply and demand traders, demand traders are gonna get in here, but then you've also got the added confluence of support and resistance traders who are looking at that level, looking to the left, looking to get involved in here as well so more buying yeah i must add a caveat to this though is that the more a level is touched the weaker it becomes yeah the weaker it becomes so what you really want to get involved in is the fresher areas of demand yeah fresh areas of demand you know first areas are the best areas to look for um uh, buy trades the more times you know three four touches of a level um, the less um, successful or the chances of success um, it actually uh, becomes and you can back test that if you want to anyways guys that brings me to the end of this video um, hope you enjoyed it hope you found this useful as well and until the next video take care so if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.